right, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, all of you been people. Welcome to another episode of Bim After Dark Live. My name is Jeff. Uh, if you're new here, uh, welcome to the, the live stream. If you're returning, thanks for thanks for joining again. Um, this is a weekly live stream where we talk about Revit, Bim, uh, and pretty much architecture and any uh, tangential software to that. Um, this is episode 96, believe it or not, which is awesome. We're going to be rolling into episode 100 this season, which is really cool. And today I have a returning guest on the on the line who has been here. I think this might be his fifth time on the show, which is pretty awesome. And we're going to be talking about electrical lighting slash power plans in Revit um, with the <laughs> idea of... of uh, for architects. And so, as you know, we've been talking about residential um, Revit quite a bit this season. Um, and so this is along those same lines. Um, you know, if you're a commercial architect doing larger work, um, odds are you've got an electrical engineer doing this side of it. And I know some people have been asking for some engineers to come on the show. And if you guys are out there and you want to be on the show and you're an electrical engineer, then reach out because I just don't know any who are willing to come on the show. Um, but I would love to have you on. But as you know, as residential architects, small scale especially, um, a lot of times we are doing electrical uh, lighting and power plans ourselves. And so that's what this is uh, focused on is a couple methods that Brenton has on how he best approaches this. And I think you guys are going to take away some some awesome stuff from this. As usual on the live stream, if you're here live tonight, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I will be paying attention and feeding stuff in as we go along. Um, so definitely uh, uh, be willing to, to speak and don't be shy. And so with that, I think I will uh, stop talking and introduce uh, Brenton Weiberg to the show again. What's up, man? Hey, how are you? Good, man. Welcome back. I think this is your fifth Thanks. time, right? I think so. Somewhere around there. I think I think we did two, four. Yeah, I think we did two back to back family. Maybe it's the fourth. I don't know. We'll see. But either way, uh, it's always a hit when you come on the show. So I appreciate you coming back um, and uh, and talking about this topic as well, because I know, um, as you can tell from the fact that there was like 60 people just in the waiting room, which is usually not the case at nine o'clock, that I think this is a, a hot topic that people, um, especially us architects, are interested in in always seeing um other people's methods on how they approach it, especially in Revit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is this is one of those things in Revit that does not have a clear ro workflow, <laughs> I don't think. I, I don't think so either. And so I'm excited to explore it and, and hopefully give people some some options on how they can explore it as well. Uh, before we do jump into the content, uh, maybe for those who haven't seen the past four or five episodes that you've been on, maybe give <laughs> everyone a quick little rundown on who you are and, and what you do. Okay, um, so my background, my education's in construction and business and all of my professional experiences in architecture. So um, I've been doing Revit for over 15 years now and um, I love building families and I sell families professionally online at revitfamily.biz if you wanna check it out. And um, yeah, that's how I connected with Jeff and. Now I'm on his podcast. <laughs> and, and speak, <laughs> yes, uh, speaking of RevitFamily.biz, if you guys have been following along to the season, um, Brenton uh, has been kind enough to sponsor this season. And so I won't even roll the ad reel this go along because uh, I think you being on the show for an hour is a perfect uh, <laughs> uh, perfect way to showcase uh, your skill and ability. But um, if you are interested, um, not only did uh, Brenton sponsor this this season of BIM After Dark Live, but he also offered everyone watching this 20% off any of the uh, bundles or packages of families on his site. He's got cabinet families and door families and window families. And if you've seen the previous episodes that Brenton was on, um, he, he showed off some of his family creation skills so uh, definitely head over to revitfamily.biz use offer code revitkid23 and you can save 20 percent off so thanks for uh, sponsoring but also offering 20 percent off man appreciate that my pleasure <laughs> awesome so so i think we should just maybe jump right into it um like i said i'm going to keep an eye on the chat i know there's going to be a lot of a lot of um oh look at that somebody likes your uh your modern cabinets yeah i do like your yes. modern cabinet families too uh so <laughs> I, I think um I, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of conversations in the chat, so I will definitely pick those apart. But maybe, maybe let's just jump right into it and 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 talk about how you plan on approaching this this subject with our our lovely audience here. Okay, awesome. So I, um, man, this has been a question that has plagued me anytime I do a residential project, and I teach at a local community college, um, and they it's a problem for the students as well. And then I also consult other architectural firms. And they ask me about it all the time. So if you're in the residential space, this for sure is like a common problem. And 
I think the reason people are unsure about it is I'm going to, so I'm going to approach this in a good, better, best scenario. Um, what I think, and this is just my opinion, there's pros and cons to each one of these. I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong. I'm just going to show you the methods I've used. I see people use, and then we can kind of go through the pros and cons of each. Um, the first method that I'm going to call the good method is the one I think people come to first. It's the, if you're new to Revit or if you're in a hurry, this is the way that is most likely going to occur to your brain first. And it's the one I like the least, but, um, you know, it's got its, its place. Um, so, uh, just real quick, we're going to zoom in here and I'll just go through it in words and then I'll demonstrate it. So this is the people using Revit as if it were CAD, <laughs> which is why I don't like it because, uh, it defeats the point. If you're going to do it this way, you might as well just still be in CAD. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can you can get you can get an electrical plan out quickly this way and it's not probably going to be the best method but you you get it done so i'm going to say it's a little bit more intuitive than some of the other methods that revit gives you um it doesn't require any advanced families so i'm just going over the pros now you're, you're not going to need an rcp a reflected ceiling plan in order to place the elements um, you're not going to really have to mess too much with your visibility graphics. It works with Revit LT, which is a major mm. uh, con for some of the other methods. Mm. Um, I forgot about that, but that's that's probably something to think about, right? Rev Revit LT doesn't have the systems tab, or does it? I don't think it does. Or or it has like a, a, a pared down version down of it. Yeah, that's a bummer. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the next the next thing is it doesn't require a whole lot of Revit knowledge to do this. If you can draw detail lines, then you can do this method. And then the other people, the other th thing people run into is, you know, in residential, you typically want your electrical plan on your floor plan, or you'll do a floor plan that is an electrical plan. Hmm. Um, I've seen people do, I've personally done it both ways where I do it on my floor plan and, or I do a separate electrical plan. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward to do this on a floor plan, whereas the other methods, you know, could take some contriving that you may not know if you're new to Revit or in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So the cons to this method, like I said, is you're using Revit, which is a beautiful 3D program <laughs> to do two dimensional stuff. And it just defeats the point of being in it. Uh, and then obviously, if you're doing it in only 2D in one view, it's not going to show in your other views. It's not going to show anything in 3D. And I think what I don't like about it is it doesn't force you to think through your design and any coordination issues you might be creating, which I think is one of the biggest benefits of Revit. So, yep. so real quickly, what we're going to do, if you haven't caught on already, is we are just going to use detail lines to do this whole electrical plan. So the wires are detail lines, the fixtures are detail lines, the switches and outlets, they're all detail lines. So um, I'm not gonna demonstrate everything. I'm assuming you know how to draw a detail line. I'm gonna go one step, say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do the advanced version of this method and say you took one step further and you have detail components. Instead of drawing, cause you could draw, okay, so for example, we could draw ourselves really quickly like a, we could draw a light symbol, right? Oops. You know, you could do this. And then I think the a lot of people that I've seen, what they do now is then they group it. Yeah. It's hurt which me is just a, watching it. It's hurting me just watching it. Yeah, which is a real <laughs> bad idea. If you want to ruin your model and make it real slow, you should group a lot of things. Detail items especially. Let's look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, you could make your light fixtures like that. You could do the same thing with the sockets or the outlets and the switches, right? And then you place these wherever you want. Um but a better method if you were going to stick with the 2d method would maybe be to invest some time in some detail components that are symbols mm -hmm. and i i ran across some online that were free so i'm just going to do that detail i'm going to put a detail component in so someone took the time to make this they even made it smart so i can come over here and pick uh it can be like an outlet or whatever so 
this is just a detail component. Let's do a switch. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we'll do a light out here in the middle. Okay, right, so we got our switch, we got our light, and then for the wires, people, in this method, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do a detail line most likely an arc on your, oops. And there you go, you've got your wired plan and you'll probably want to use like a hidden line, right? Mm -hmm. There you go, you see why it's attractive to people. Pretty easy, low, low level of skill required to do this. Um, but like I said, it's not going to be in any of your other views and if you need it if you're doing interior elevations it's not your sconces aren't on the walls your your pendants aren't above your countertop like it's not great i did want to point out one other thing that you had on the cons that i don't think you mentioned out loud um is the editing <clears throat> is more work too and so i always oh. find this interesting when, whenever whenever i see people taking this approach to anything in revit um you know, whether it's wall sections uh, just anytime you're drafting in revit right you know the I always, especially when, when, when I was teaching folks who were just learning, um, even at a firm, it was like, this may have got you there faster in the beginning, right? But but now, you know, just think about all the scenarios where you have to modify this, what it's going to take. Not just the 3D coordination aspect of it, the elevations and stuff, but what you just <laughs> did, right? If you if you move all those elements, you got to redo all the lines. You gotta, it's just, it's, you know, the, 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 the more you draft, definitely the less the less smart your revisions get for sure. So that's something yep. to keep in mind too, if you're someone who does it this way. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because yeah, that that is the single most frustrating thing about this is I've used this before when I was first starting off and I would do it last because I'm like, okay, if I do it last, the odds that I'm gonna have to move anything are low. But I promise you, no matter how solid and done your design is, you are going to be moving lights. And mm -hmm. every time you do it, you've got to move the light and then you've got to chase down and then you can see detail lines mm -hmm. that like your only option is to really just draw it again because it's not going to like let you reconnect it mm -hmm. the way you want it definitely <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm glad you said that because that was that is a major con for me 100 mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right so i'm going to go to the better method and this is going to be like i'm going to say this is the middle ground if you're in lt uh, Revit LT, this is probably going to be your best shot. You can still use the best method. It's just you're not going to have access to the wire mm. feature in, in systems, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, so in the better method, what we're doing is we're going to use actual light families. We're going to actually use switch families. And um, I'm going to show you, you're going to, you can use detail lines which is what all the LT users are going to have to do. But in this method, I'm going to show you how to use the wires in the, in the Revit systems um, tab. Got so, it. so I the, think so, so just, just to maybe clarify that. So if you're an LT again, we don't, we have to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure they don't have wires. You're right. I'm pretty sure. And so, um, so your your the method for LT users would be, what you're going to show, which is probably, which is using families. And then you, you still can't use wires. So you're still going to connect them with detail, detail items, but at least you're using 3d families for the first part of it. Yep. So <laughs> someone, the, someone in the chat confirmed that Revit LT people don't have wires. Just, just, just someone confirmed that for me. Cause I, yeah, actually that would be good. I tried to look <laughs> it up, but I've only ever used full Revit. So I don't yeah, actually... I know. And it's weird when you try and find the comparison, it's, it's kind of vague as well, but, um, but I, I'm yeah. pretty sure they don't as I'm pretty Pretty sure they don't but i know they have some structural stuff so i, I thought uh, maybe they have some systems that are paired down so revit l2 users let us know if you have wires all right go ahead man <laughs> yeah i think i'll, I'll let you know what is, they answer <laughs> I, I think this is another reason why it's like people don't know what to do on these di on these wire diagrams because it's like like i said it's not clear they don't revit wasn't really built for residential in this particular case oh, so where an architect can, can confirm there are no wires in revit lt bummer okay Bummer. Especially since Revit LT was like supposed to be marketed towards residential architects. It's like, well, residential architects are doing their own electrical plans. So why would you not leave that feature in? On, one Autodesk. feature at Come least. Come on, Autodesk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So for this example, I made sure I didn't have any crazy families. I just picked out of the box Revit families. 
So uh, let's just, we'll do the component command and then we'll just get us an outlet. And this is just the Revit outlet. And I, I just wanna show you so that you can kind of, I'm gonna compare it for the next method. Okay, so it's pretty easy. So we didn't go over the pros and cons, but this is about, in my opinion, it's as intuitive as drawing them. You just, the only thing you needed to know is, is to go a step further and to go look and load in the family, right? From the Revit out of the box. Um, so if you can do that step, this is this is almost as easy as the other one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna say it's still intuitive. We're using out of the box families. So, you know, you don't need advanced family knowledge. You don't need a library of your own. You can just use out of the box. Um, it still works with Revit LT, except for the wires, like we talked about. Um, you still don't, we're not using any advanced techniques. It show, and, and the big thing is it now shows in 3Ds. It's showing in your other views and it's forcing a more thoughtful workflow and process, right? right. Um, okay, the cons will come when I go to place the lights. We're gonna have to use a reflected ceiling plan in order to show the lights on the floor plan, we're gonna need to do some tweaking to the visibility graphics that might not be intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, editing is still, I'm gonna show you, even if you use the wires, it's still not great because of the families Revit uses for switches. They don't connect for some reason to the lights. I don't know why. Um, so it's still not perfect, but it's a little better. Um, then you're stuck with the Revit default light families and if you've seen the light families you're not exactly picking out of like the premium like looking fixtures mm -hmm. um it's the same with the switches and the and the outlets i mean as far as how they look you yeah. can say if you're if you're looking to make renderings for example or something you're definitely not going to yep. want to use those <laughs> okay so uh, we did the outlets let's do a switch mm -hmm. And so for, the, for those you know who don't know, um, you know, out of the box, these are the ones that will just be um, installed as long as you install the family libraries um, when you go to load family. So these are all the ones that are just straight from your install file. Okay, so I'm gonna do, uh, instead of a single pole, let's just do the three-way. All right, so we're setting it up. For ourselves, let's say we'll have one light over the kitchen sink. So that'll be a single pole. <clears throat> All right, so we've got we've got our outlets, we've got our switches, and now it's now what we got to do is kind of shift mindset for a second to go to the lighting. I think what you want to do is you're in a floor plan. Most residential sets don't even have a reflected ceiling plan, so it's probably not even on your radar. Your template may or may not have it if you've customized your template, but by default, the Revit template does have a reflected ceiling plan. So that's what I'm using. If you just flip to, I mean, do you think it's, do I need to go over a reflected ceiling plan and how to create one? Um, I, don't, I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna flip to the reflected ceiling plan. So I'm on the middle, on our better example. And I'm just going to place some lights. Just do a surface mount light. Let's just do, I'm just gonna do a grid for fun here and then we'll do one over the sink. And this is the part that trips people up because, okay, so I'm trying to lay out my lights and I'm on a reflected ceiling plan, but most likely I'm trying to line them up with things that are in a floor plan. Mm -hmm. So now you're like looking at this view and thinking, okay, so how do I like get these lights right? Um, so this is why this method might not be as intuitive for people. So what I typically do is you just use the underlay feature to show the main floor and that'll show you anything that you've placed that's a family so now you're seeing something i did which is i faked in the cabinets right <laughs> i did detail lines so uh and depending on what you're doing this is how i do preliminary designs right if i'm still moving around my floor plan i don't invest the time to do families or the kitchen cabinets till it's settled but um you can grab your detail lines 
I just filter, I just do a mass select and then filter them and then I copy and then I paste a line. So now you can still kind of like, okay, there's my sink. If I want, say these were pendants, if I want them over my bar and then, okay, this will go over my dining table. You know, I'm not saying this is the right layout here. <laughs> we're just doing a quick, <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me on my layout right now. <clears throat> All right. Perfect. So now you've got your lights. Um, they're in place. They're in 3D. They're on the ceiling. They're going to show up in your elevations. All that good stuff that we love about Revit. But now you really want to show the lighting plan back on your floor plan. And if we go back to our floor plan, you can see the lights aren't there. So there's two methods I use. Neither one are my favorite thing. So if I was doing this method only, I think what I would do is I would probably not try to do it on my floor plan. I would probably create a separate electrical plan to do this because I don't probably want these visibility. The visibility graphics might screw up things that I'm trying to show on my floor plans. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you one method here and then I have a copy of my floor plan it's supposed to represent just an electrical plan. So you'll see the dimensions are gone. The door tags are all gone. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've shaded in the walls to make it clearer. Okay. So let's go back to our floor plan. I'll show you one method. And this method is to simply just put an underlay on it. And then the key, uh, mine popped in right, but yours may not pop in right when you put your main floor as the underlay. You need to make sure that on the underlay settings where it says underlay orientation it needs to be looking up because if you're looking down you may or may not get what you're looking for mm -hmm. so if you switch it to look up there you see your lights problem here is they are uh grayed out right you can't do so, anything with them right you can't select them you just see them <laughs> yeah Okay, so, and the selection thing is another irritation for people because now it's like, okay, I'm trying to edit these lights, but I can't grab them. Mm -hmm. So to overcome that, you do just need to know about this one feature down at the bottom, um, right here where a lot of your selection settings are. There's one that's like layered with an X and an arrow. If you click that, it'll allow you to pick underlay elements. So then you can now grab your lights and move them if you want to adjust them from your floor plan. I'm going to pause and just remind everyone of that because that's something that I, I can't even tell you the amount of people that I teach Revit to and, and forget about that area. It's like the options bar, right? The options bar in the middle b between the ribbon, you know, that bar, and then on the right, at the bottom right, those are always trip people up. And so, again, that's on the bottom right. It's all the selection selection tools. I don't remember what they're called anymore. Um, and it's the one that looks like reference planes, which always kind of was weird to me. Like when I see that icon, I think reference planes, but whatever. Um, and there's one called select underlay elements. And so that's what uh, Brenton's showing right there um, is that's defaulted, I think, to X. So you can't select them. Um, and mm -hmm. just by flipping that, you can actually select underlay elements. So whether you're looking up or looking down, anything that's gray that you couldn't select before, you'd be able to select. I just wanted to reiterate it because I think that's a huge tip that I know a lot of people don't even know which you know that's, yeah. that's why you're here to learn new stuff so here you go <laughs> yeah in fact if that's news to you you really should spend some time getting to know what all of these do because it mm -hmm. makes a big difference in your workflow at definitely. least for me definitely 100 <laughs> percent. or, or when, when you can't select a mullion because it's pinned or something like that you know that's yes. always fun to that's always fun when there's new users and they're driving themselves nuts and then you're like oh you just uncheck this box <laughs> or trying to grab the floor slab Yes. Uh, yes. When it's covered by walls, like it's, yep. It, yep. if you don't know about these tools, it's impossible <laughs> or frustrating at least. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, okay. So we got our lights in, um, you've got your underlay. So everything's showing now in floor plan. Um, if you really hate the underlay being grayed out and you're not using underlay anywhere else in the project, <laughs> you can make these black. Uh, you can go up to manage. And you're going to test my knowledge real quick. Um, I think it's additional settings, half tone and underlay. You can uncheck the apply half tone and it will not half tone your underlays. But like I said, you better not be using an underlay anywhere else in your project or it's going to change it. So you can, but you can do it. 
Okay, so now we got our lights showing. And the other thing I want to point out about the lights too from out of the box is you can see they don't have the standard symbols either. They're mm -hmm. just showing you like the shape of the light. Right. And that too might annoy people because you want, you know, your standard electrical symbols there. So that's another con. Okay, so now it's to the wiring. And we'll, I already showed you the detail line method. So right now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you the wiring method. So if you go over to, oh, my screen got a lot smaller. Where are the systems? In fact, I won't bother with that. If you just click on the light, it, in, the con, in the contextual menu, the new kind of tab that pops up, it'll show, it'll give you the option to power it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a, basically you're going to create a circuit. Now I am not an electrical engineer. I only know so much about this topic enough to get me by on my electrical plans. So please don't like, if there's an electrical engineer who uses Revit out there, who's just like turning over in his grave, excuse I, me. I'm sure there will be, but I'm sure every one of the architects out there is like, yep, <laughs> I, I know just enough to get by to make these plans. That's all. That's all we need to do. I mean, that's kind of the story with with architects, anyways, right? We we know just enough to get by <laughs> on yeah, most things. How, how we, how we do. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab all of the lights I want on the circuit. So this isn't how I'd really wire it, but just for to show you, I'll grab them all, all of the lights, and then I just hit the power button. And now it's created a circuit between all of them. So if I now, if I select one and then tab select, sorry, if I hover over it and then tab, uh, tab select them all, because they're on a circuit, it will grab them all. And then if I come up here and I hit arc wire, um, it's not doing what I thought it would do, one sec. It normally will chain them together but I might be doing something wrong. This is visibility sure. settings of that view? Uh, it could be. See, on the reflected ceiling yeah. plan, it's doing it. Uh, so this is what I expected to happen. When you tab, it shows you a ghost of all the wires. And if you just hit arc wire, mm -hmm. it puts them, it connects them all for you. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Let's go back to the main floor plan. It's not going to do that for us. So you can still connect them. You're just, it's going to be more manual. So let me go up here. It's bumming me out that my, there's my systems. Way on the left. <laughs> you're, no. You have your 4K screen you're so used to. I know I'm not, and I have so many plugins. <clears throat> uh, Keep going all the way to the left. Oh, here we go. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so you're just going to go to art. I know the other, my other problem is I never use the ribbons. I have I shortcuts know. for I'm everything. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's AW on my computer. Yep. <laughs> okay, so if you choose the arc wire command, you can see if you're over an electrical object, you get this uh, circle with an X through it. And that's telling you you're connecting to the light fixture. So if you click there and then just... I click out here to form the arch and then I come back to the light and sometimes it can be tricky to grab. So I tab, you want that circle with an X through it again. And if you get that, you've made the connection. So we're just going to really quickly do this. So, so while like you're doing that. this, I think one thing to point out um, that's important to recognize is that um, I don't believe wires, wires are not 3D objects. In, in in Revit, yeah. right? I mean, they're, the data of them connecting is there. And that's why this is interesting that you can see the wires in your reflected ceiling plan because you did that sort of auto wire thing, but you can't see them here. But technically the system is connected. It's because they're they're unique in, in the sense. Um, and that's why that's why goofy shit like you're just showing is happening because they're, cause they're, they're, they're kind of like these weird annotated objects that are actually smart annotated. It's, it's bizarre, but, yeah, but it's it like is important weird... to know that there's not a three dimensional wire being drawn in this arc path. Yep. Um, okay, so I've just moved. I've just connected all of these, right? So I just want to show you what happened. Once you've connected them, it's great because now, anytime you move that light, the wire goes with it, right? There's no more like deleting lines or work that you've done and then redoing it. Mm -hmm. 
So if I just want to move this, it's like I can just rebend the arc however I want. And the cool thing is, um, if you click on the arc wire, you'll get this little handle and you can move it anywhere you want. It's staying connected, mm -hmm. but if you like it, if you like your your symbol to always like the wire to go right to, you know, the quadrant of your circle, then you can do that. Or some people like it in the center, right? So you can move it around if you want. Then if um, you want to disconnect the light, what you're going to have to do is you have to make sure you grab this square with a circle in it, and then it will disconnect it. So and then this, you, so you may, you may, you may get into this in the, in the next session, but Angelo who's in the chat had a great question that I think it does fit quite along with right what you're doing, um, which is, you know, what, what are these fixture families need to, to do this? Like what, no. what, what's, you know, I think the question was, do, uh, do these fixture families need something special in them to be recognized as a circuit or by make for making a circuit? So I don't know. I don't know if you plan on getting on that into the next one or if you want to dive into that right now just to explain. No, it's to actually folks. a great it's a great time for that question because I'm going to show you the the switches won't connect oh, to the lights because they're awesome. missing that element. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's <laughs> let's just so here's let's do the arc wire command again. You can see, okay, so let's just I'm gonna review that real quick. Arc wire command, and then when I hover over, I'm hover there, I'm getting that symbol, right? That circle with the X. That's letting you know there's a connection point. And that's that's what you're talking about. Inside this family is a is an electrical connection point. Mm -hmm. So when I come over here to try to place it on the switch, nothing's happening because there's no connection point in this family. For some reason, the out of the box switch family for Revit <laughs> does not have a, a connection point. I knew that too, it drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, so you're just gonna have to fake it. And it's real annoying because what happens is because it's not connecting to the next item in the circuit, it's giving the home run arrow symbol. Mm -hmm. So this is why this method, this hybrid method is like nice, but not quite there. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is if I move the switch, you're going to also have to move the wire. But the great thing about the wire is you don't have to delete it and redraw it like you do detail lines. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect but it'll at least like you can edit it. Can you remove the home run arrow? Yeah, so in visibility graphics, mm -hmm. if you are showing all of your categories and you go under wire, oh, oops. If you go under wires down at the bottom and expand it, there's the home run arrows. You can unclick those because uh, no residential architect I think is using home run arrows. Pro so Probably not, yeah, I mean, we're not doing panel. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do actually use the home run arrows, but it's only when I want to symbolize a, a light that's downstairs going to a switch Got upstairs. Makes sense. I let yep. the home run arrow show. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, okay. So now you've seen this hybrid method that I think is pretty clean, but now you're getting a feel for like, okay, it's not perfect but it, it's an it's a pretty good solution yeah my, my guess is this is where probably a huge percentage of, of people are um uh, i would say or or it's a mix between the the first and the and the and the, and the second would probably be you know uh or or i would say i from my experience most people are probably using families with detail items for for um for the wires it's probably okay. there that's probably, I mean, I'm just guessing and, and maybe anyone in the chat can tell us just so we can get a, a feel for it. But just based on my knowledge and experience talking with people, it seems like a lot of people use, um, they might have a library of family light fixtures that they like to use, but they're probably just using, uh, um, you know, annotated objects for the wires themselves. Yep. So maybe at least at a minimum, this, this can hopefully help them take it to this next level, which is connecting with wires. And then, <laughs> yeah. So if you do have your own library of of self-made like lighting fixtures now you know all you need to do is just put some put some uh, electrical connections in there and you're going to be good and right. if you're just using the out of the box switches just go in there edit the family put in the connection point and you're good the and only I will, thing i'll also add too if you're not doing calculations with it don't beat yourself up over that connection <laughs> that connector yeah. when you're in the when you're in the family environment right because because you do have to give it some data but if you're not doing any of those calcs don't sit there running through specs to figure out the exact voltage because if, if you're not using it then it's not necessarily that big of a deal yeah the the only thing that matters is that 
the things you're trying to connect have the same voltage. So oh, yes, like, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. Yes, that is important. <laughs> yeah, so if you look in there, you can see they all say 120 volts. That's the only important thing that you're gonna have to worry about. Right, and so right. if you put a connection point in your switch, make sure, it, I mean, you can put one volt, it, the voltage doesn't matter, it just yes, 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 and that is, that is some of the small information that we know as architects is you shouldn't be connecting a 240 volt to a 120 <laughs> volt piece of equipment type of thing got it <laughs> yeah. all right all right moving on this is awesome great man <laughs> um the next visibility graphic thing that might still give you a tick about this is the lines are solid and uh some people may or may not be familiar with how to change these types of like objects hmm. so um these the lines are controlled by object styles so you're gonna have to go to your manage and then go to object styles here and it'll give you a list of all the different objects in Revit. And what we're interested in is the wires. Um, so here's where you can control what they look like. So if you want them dashed, we'll, we'll do a 1 16th dash. Some people like them a different color. We'll do it for red for fun, do it in red. And then if you want a different line weight, you can do that. But OK, so you can see how that then changes the wires to be you, whatever you want them to look like, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the other method I use for showing lights in a plan, um, and th the reason I made a different plan for this that's its own specific electrical plan is because what you do is you go into the view settings, and over in the side there is discipline, and if you change it from architectural to electrical, it this changes fundamentally the way Revit treats objects in a view. Mm -hmm. And so because you're telling it it's an electrical view, it's going to assume you want to see the lights and all of the electrical elements. And you can see it brings them in nicely, like they're they're black. Um, in fact, let me let me just make sure this is true. I think they come in black on their own, but I just want to make sure it wasn't uh, because I changed the underlay. Oh, the underlay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. So they 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 truly do come in black. So this is the fastest way, but you can see now it overrid it, it it overrode all of my other graphical settings. The walls are no longer shaded nicely the way I had them. So you're going to have to go back into visibility graphics and start setting up the view again the way you want it to look. Or maybe you like it this way. This actually looks pretty nice if you're only trying to look at electrical stuff, except for my faked in detail lines. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Notice that you, you switch the halftone um, back to the original and, and actually halftone the uh, the architectural objects because you flipped the oh, discipline. That, that's a good point. That's true. Cool. Um, and then from here on out, you would do the same thing that I just sh showed you in the last method. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my floor plan. And so this is the method I use now. I Before I was using this, I mean, the first time I ever did an electrical plan, it was this, just like everyone else, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I kind of got into this method. And then finally, I'm to the point where, like, I hate, I hate all these methods. And I just, I kind of invented my own. But in order for you to do that, it relies very heavily on having good families that have certain functionality. So this method is going to be for those of you who feel confident making your own families or want to wait for me to make them for you because <laughs> mine will be on mine will be on sale for here this later this year and you can just buy them. Um, and, and they'll have all sorts of features that like I could go in for hours. I, this has been my life for the last two months is making these families. And there's like there's a lot of stuff that I could go into just electrical plans in general are really hard in Revit because so for example one thing that frustrates me on my plans is by the door you typically need like three or four light switches you mm -hmm. rarely are just putting one light switch by a door and if you put it in Revit what's going to happen is you have to space them really far apart so the symbols don't overlap in plan mm -hmm. then they look ridiculous for renderings or for elevations because you're never going to space one light switch. You're going <laughs> right. to use like a three gang box mm -hmm. right? or a four gang. <laughs> so like, so my families will take care of that. There's options to make a four gang box, but then still have the symbols spaced out on the floor mm -hmm. plan, and all that, that good stuff. So <laughs> anyways, so this is if you really want to invest 
either yourself making your own families or you know buying some someone someone else's work that you trust um but it goes a lot faster so if you build the families right the lights will show up in floor plan without you having to go into a reflected ceiling plan um, or without you having to change to an underlay or mess with the visibility graphics so the families I use for my residential projects are ones I built and I specifically built them so that you can place um, a light in floor plan and see it without having to do anything. So let me just find my light family. Um, okay, so here's a surface light. And um, so I'm gonna I'm placing it in plan. It's showing up in plan, and it substituted the proper symbol rather than the trying to show the geometry, right? So I've taken with my one family. I've taken care of like all of the cons that I did not particularly like about this method. Mm -hmm. So now I can just freely place these really easy in floor plan um, anywhere I want. Right, so we can quickly recreate this and then we can do a switch as well. So here's my switch that I designed. And so if I go over here, built into my switch, I can quickly change this to like a four, four gang. And then I can, oh, I don't know why it's three feet. Three feet, space. <laughs> <laughs> We'll change it to six. So now you've got you can see the geometry here is going to look correct in elevation, and then now uh, we can just justify it to the right. So now you have all your switches, and they're not on top of each other, but in three D, they're right. also shown correct in three D. Mm -hmm. And then now when we go to hook them up, I can power the system, and I can tab, and I can connect them with an arc wire really quickly and then also it will connect over here to the switch and then i just pull it over to the right switch and then with these ones right here i can also power them wire them and then switch them oh i forgot to put an arc in the line but you get the oh so here's another thing i need to Sometimes you grab the wrong thing. You can see how it's got a square. That means I, I, un I disconnected it. You don't want that. So you can tab till it's just the circle. And if you just move the circle, it keeps the connection for you. And then um, I also have outlets as well. Did I, I did not load in my outlets actually. So, but you get the you get the drift. The the outlets are the least important. They they <laughs> pretty much like the out of the box ones. They I mean they have a lot of features, but no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so let's, you, let's pick real quickly before we move on from that. Let, let's pick apart. There's a couple of questions in the chat too, and, and and I think I'd be interested to hear your opinions on 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 because I know knowing you, I know uh, you beat around as many different variations of how you should. <laughs> build this thing before you built it or before you came to what it is today so the first question that people had was when you placed your lights they noticed that they were not hosted um they were not ceiling hosted right they were i think they were face-based or 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 non-hosted objects um so maybe talk a little bit about maybe maybe pick apart one of those light families for everyone just to see okay. why you approach it the way you did and, and and pros and cons and so on and so forth um, okay, so I'm just going to admit something. That was pretty observant. I was trying to sneak <laughs> past you. Um, so this is this is the first version of the light, mm -hmm. and um, we're still experimenting with the best way to place them. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, there's pros and cons to not having them hosted to the ceiling, especially when ceilings are going are vaulted. Right. It causes all sorts of symbol pro. Like this symbolic mm -hmm. symbol is no longer mm -hmm. in the right orientation, and it won't show. Yep. Anyways, we're actually working through it. I think we landed on, after experimenting with all sorts of things, we landed on, I think we like hosting it to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we found a clever way to get the symbol to show even when the family is slanted. So mm. um, it's 
anyways we could go we that could be a whole topic of I'm, a different sure. One. <laughs> I'm sure but, no, um, but I, I, people, people notice that so I did want to bring it up um and yeah no I was interested too because I do find that um you know things like a recessed can or something that's gonna something that's gonna be recessed into a ceiling it always seems to make more sense to host it because obviously it needs to cut the object etc but pendants like for, for that example that you're just giving almost always seem to be much easier to use when they're work plane based or not, you know, not face based objects because of what you're saying there will they'll kink off or they'll select the different things and it almost ends up being easier uh, to be able to just place it and then set an offset to the to the ceiling itself. Yeah. That's that's I think why the original set was like this. This is what I used for the last year hmm. and I it's it is great, but um there's some cons that I've found over using it the past year that I'm going to fix with uh, making them ceiling posted. Got it. Got it. Um, one one quick thing I think might be helpful for people um, is is even in the previous method, maybe just showing real quickly um, if someone wanted to add a connection to let's say the outlet, maybe just showing them real quickly what that process looks like because I think that would be helpful for some people if 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 they're gonna maybe try and do sort of a hybrid approach where they'll modify maybe a couple of the out of the boxes so they can at least use wires in the out of the box. Uh, maybe just show them like in the family editor how they can actually just quickly put, cause it's not like it's a big yeah. thing to do, but I think there may be a lot of people that are like, oh cool, yeah, I had a connector, how the hell do I do that? So may maybe that'd be yeah. something worth worth going down. Um, and I know it won't be like a, a huge rabbit hole. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> no, that's great. It's really simple. <laughs> it seems intimidating if you've never done it before, but it's Exactly not. why I'm thinking we should do it. Cause I think it's it seems intimidating, but it's, it's silly, stupid, simple. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna double click the out of the box symbol. And here's uh, our switch. They look amazing, very real <laughs> and accurate. Um, the poor so guy out there who built them like 10 years ago is like, oh, they're mic in front of my switches. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry you you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna hide the wall temporarily so that I, the, the thing about connections is they have to be hosted to some sort of geometry. So I'm just gonna use the back of this plate mm -hmm. to host it. So then what you're going to do in the family editor is again, go up to systems, which apparently always evades me. Um, or maybe it's just the create. Tab. Yeah, it's create. Oh, yeah. You're in a, you're in a, that type of family or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then connectors, and then you're going to hit electrical connector. And oops. Okay, I don't know why it's not wanting to show up. Hmm. It's like it doesn't want to wreck it. Maybe I just need a tab. Oh, there we go. All right, tab select. All right, so then it puts this big old symbol. Don't worry about the size, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but basically now you've got this connection and it's hosted. And it, this is the other thing that's annoying is it just, it doesn't give you like a placement. I, I don't know how big of a control freak you are. I'm a control freak, but <laughs> It's just going to center it on whatever face you picked. Mm -hmm. Then you just click on the actual connector object. And then now you have a bunch of options over here. And like we said, the only thing you really care about is this voltage. So I'm going to put 120 in. Oops. And I'm trying to think if the system type matters. Uh, I always use unbalanced power. I don't think it matters, but if it does, you might have to match the system type. So that's literally it, guys. So now all you have to do is load that thing back in. <laughs> Drum roll. No, we didn't practice this, so if it doesn't work, it's live, work, man. This is live, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to try to connect it. There it and is. There, there's your symbol. So now, unlike before, when we move it, it's going to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that connector thing, that connector thing is is it is a pain in the butt on on uh, for for mechanical um, for any any mechanical electrical and plumbing families. I've noticed there's there's been some unique ways, but as far as I know, it it only centers on the face of whatever object it hosted to. So. Um, you want, you want, when you, when you have like an a air, air handling unit or something that has like a whole bunch of connections, it's always interesting. It's so I'm always interested to see how, how like the creator of, the, of that component approached, you know, that, that process, because, you know, you, if you just have a square, for example, of a face or a rectangle and you need like even three connectors on it in different locations, it's an interesting process. <laughs> yeah. See. You've got to make like 
a, a one thirty second of an inch extrusion or something. So, right. There's interesting ways that people have approached it, and I've seen some some interesting ways. But it is a interesting problem. But I'm I'm glad you did that. I appreciate you doing that because I think there's a lot of people out there who who uh, who will who will benefit from just that alone, uh, being able to tweak yeah. it and add it to it. Yeah, if you don't want to make your whole family library, at the very least, modify the out of the box ones so that yep. you can. And we do have some electrical engineers on the on the line, and they did say you are right with an unbalanced because it's 120 volt single phase. So, okay. wow. <laughs> thanks, that dude. Was a, yeah, that was a complete guess. A blind squirrel finds a nut every <laughs> once in a while. Uh, I don't I don't remember that on the exams. Do you? I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, there was somebody up there just said that they use mini faces. That's what I've seen too. mini faces on on components to uh, to center, which is kind of unfortunate when you think about it, building extra geometry in your family just to center, center the, the component kind of sucks, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just so weird because you could easily constrain the center point of that with like, right? like you do anything else. <laughs> right. Why not? Awesome, man. All right. Uh, anything else you wanted to, to touch on with the with the best the best method? Um, no, I, I think that's it. There's, I could go in for hours, just other problems people are going to encounter. Th this is just getting the wiring and the basics done. You're going to encounter other issues. Revit, like I said, Revit is really weak on the electrical diagrams for residential mm -hmm. architects. It's just the families it gives you is not going to probably suffice if you're doing anything more than just like a, a quick electrical plan. Mm -hmm. 30. Mm -hmm. So definitely no that's awesome so 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 just to recap you know the the good i guess we're calling it good the first one <laughs> yeah <laughs> the good method is essentially drafting right yeah it, it's 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 drafting uh not just drafting uh your wires but also drafting your your uh, your symbols and everything like that essentially all two-dimensional cad drafting the the better is 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 using families but typically out of the box families and then maybe you're using detail items but hopefully now after seeing this today you're going to start using wires and then the best is really is really building and, and and customizing families for this case because of those limitations of the out of the box whether it's the the visibility limitations right like you said the seeing you know seeing the seeing the lights on a on a floor plan if you want the visibility of the symbol itself the visibility of the 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 switches the perfect example right where you lay them out and so and so on and then also the connectivity of them all so um so i, th I think that did i did i hit everything was that the re good recap there yeah i, I think that's pretty good <laughs> awesome. um, i mean i i'm gonna also say and i might be biased because i make families for a living but that i love families and if there's something that can ruin your file faster I don't know of it because literally families will bad families will ruin your file <laughs> they'll cost you time and money and uh it's like i don't know <laughs> if you are really invested in revit and you make a living off of creating drawings with revit mm -hmm. i think you really need to invest in yourself to learn how to build families or invest in a really good library of families it will make your workflow better mm -hmm. it'll make your models function better and it'll your headache a lot of people's frustration with Revit, a, a lot of it can be traced to bad families and their frustration with a family. Because as a designer, you're like, you're going away designing, doing your designy thing, trying to get a floor plan done. You don't want to stop. Mm -hmm. Like having not having the family you need just completely puts the brakes on everything you're trying to do. Yeah. And it's just this side tangent. So <laughs> I really think you should hire an employee who knows how to buy, who knows how to like create families or invest in yourself. 100%. Like I'm a very big proponent of families. 100%. No, this has been awesome. I think what we, what we probably should do, I think, cause there are also a couple of questions. There's quite a bit of questions about, the approach to some of these families so i think maybe what we'll do is when when you're ready with this with this electrical family package uh, you know we'll we'll have you come on again and maybe we can you can pick apart a couple of the light fixture families maybe and how you approach them you know how you how you use the symbolic lines and how you how you approach the visibility of them how you approach the connectors the you know whatever it ends yeah. up being i think it'll probably be useful for folks because as you said um you know the the, whether it's you investing in in someone else who built the family library for you or you investing in yourself being able to customize them you know the and for those out there who, who are in that journey um it seems daunting at first but 
it's it's one of those return on investments downstream that is just so worth it. It may take you a week to build a light fixture family, but if you use that for the next 15 years, 10 years, five years, and it makes, you know, it, it increases your productivity and your efficiency and your drawings that much more as well as your modeling, then it's a, a week well spent, right? So, yeah. so uh, definitely, I think I think uh, I think that's what we'll do. I think uh, when when you're ready with that lighting package, we'll have you come back on and we'll do a a, a light fixture family uh, review with with Brenton and and see and, and you can sort of break down some of your approaches to to some of those families. I think it'll be super useful. Yeah, that would be fun. I would love to do that. Yeah, awesome, I... <laughs> awesome, man. Well. Brenton, thank you so much for coming on again. I really appreciate it. I think I think everyone enjoyed it. There's been some some great comments in the chat. It seems like a, a lot of people took some awesome stuff away from this. So, um, any final words before we wrap up? No, I, I thanks for having me on. It I love coming on here. So awesome, man. And, and again, uh, Brenton, uh, uh, not only is he an architect, but he also um, runs RevitFamily.biz, who again sponsored this episode, and uh, and you can save twenty percent off. Uh, so head on over to his his website at RevitFamily.biz. I'll link it below, uh, and use RevitKid23 to save twenty percent off, or save that code for a few months from now when when Brenton releases the Electrical Families and use it for <laughs> that, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. and, then, and then they know that you'll hear it here, right? Um, awesome. And again, guys, thank you so much for joining us live. Um, we have uh, and Brenton, thanks again uh, for coming on. I do appreciate it. Um, anywhere, anywhere else that pe- uh, you want to send people or RevitFamily.biz is the good good spot to reach out. Well, that's the best place I know of. But. <laughs> okay. You got it. You got it. So, so head on. Definitely, you can. And if you want to reach out to Brenton, go over there and hit the contact, and and, and he'll get you. Uh, and he'll be and, and he can uh, you know chat with you through that. Um, and then everyone else who's 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 here. Um, Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining live. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll be here again next week. Next week is a special time. Um, it's at 12.30 p.m. Eastern uh, instead of nighttime. I have an amazing guest. I'll just say it now. It's Eric Reinhardt uh, at 30 by 40 Design Workshop, which I'm sure everyone here is familiar with because he has a ridiculously large following on YouTube. Um, and I'm super excited to have him on. So definitely come back here at 12.30 um, next week. And Brenton, thanks again. Thank you guys all. Uh, have an awesome weekend. And uh with that, I want to bid you guys adieu and see you soon. See you later.